Jennifer Kerr, and I'm a choreographer, and of the young choreographer. Um, one of the one of the great learning opportunities that I uh, that I think parents in the U.S. have um, on the horizon is there's a there's a very profound difference in the tax code. Actually, for example, the um, there is almost an incentive in, in the U.S. Uh, for its, for example, nonprofit or 501c3 giving, which under which education, uh, cultural institutions, universities, and religious institutions all sort of fall under the same uh, 501c3 uh, tax code. And as festivals such as the Avignon Festival or Yesco de la Vida or even Chayo, which is the location of the problem, which, which you mentioned that. As, as some of these uh, institutions turn more towards philanthropy, I was wondering if there's a, uh, I was wondering if we could reflect uh, on those kinds of conversations, because I think the individual, the individual giving, whether it's cultural or educational or philanthropic, is definitely changing. So I was wondering if there's a way to reflect on that, whether it's from a planning perspective or cultural. Um, it's a fascinating question. Someone, uh, Guy Saumon, a French writer, just passed on to me a book he's done about American philanthropy in French, published in France, about American philanthropy and the American philanthropic tradition, just what you're talking about. Exactly because it is alien from the French tradition, which it remains uh, state-centered. Um, and it seems to me it's a, it's a good example of prices and choices on the menu, right? That is, if you make the choice for, uh, as we have done on the whole, for philanthropic initiative, for structure in our tax code, some degree to uh, encourage that and so on. You get great institutions, you get the Central Park Conservancy, you get the Museum of Modern Art, you get many wonderful things from that. But you lack a lot, too. You, get, you have a, an absence of culture at the center of the city, so to speak, which is, which is a loss. If in France you make the choice for uh, centralized, a, a ministry of culture uh, that, in, in, that may be decentralized into various regions, but nonetheless pays that price, discourages at some level, whether by tradition or by uh, tax code, uh, individual philanthropy. You get wonderful institutions, but I think you can fairly say you do pay a price in, uh, in entrepreneurial art making, that is, in innovation. Uh, it is not entirely an accident that uh, New York uh, has been now for a while, not quite to the same degree, a capital of art making in a way that those of us who love Paris lament to see it uh, receive from. So I think that the, the, it's not a choice between one model or the other, but a question of seeing clearly what each one gets you. And each one gets you good things, the different kinds of good things. Uh, and uh, I think that that's uh, that kind of, now obviously I would like to see us spend far more on uh, dance and, uh, and art than we do on, on uh, everything else we do. But uh, I think that it's one of the places where, I guess the more interesting question, we had you know, all night to talk about it, and one of the questions that Guy Salmon raises in this book is, to what degree is that stuff flexible? You know, it reflects preferences that are written in laws, but it also reflects profound cultural uh, tropisms, profound cultural traditions that are very hard to alter, and very hard to alter. I'm not sure that you would, you would want to alter them. I don't know if you, you could even if you wanted to. Those are big questions.